So after matter, what did I try next? This is for stick. Now I can't document this to the 15th century. I can document it to the 16th century. So as I said, I am interested in the dyes of the 15th century, but I'm also interested in natural dyeing in general. Um, it has all been quite fun. Now, once again, this was mordanted with alum. And first of all, I misread my instructions. They said 2% weight of fiber and I did four. Um, and I ended up with this beautiful mustard yellow and I love this color. I think it goes really well with my matter and I'd love to make something out of those two colors. There we go, you can see what my taste in color is right there. Now, the fun thing with Fustic is it changes color, well, a lot of dyes do, but Fustic does. It changes color depending on what other chemicals you put with it. So this was mordanted with alum and this was also mordanted with alum. But what I did differently for this um, green color is I put some iron in the pot. Um, I just used a chemical for the iron, but you could also use a iron pot. Um, and it turned green. Now, I dyed this in 4% and then I took this out and there was still a lot of color left because I'd misread my instructions. So I just put this into the pot and I put some iron in and I'm looking at it and I know it's meant to turn green and it's just looking like a sort of ugly brown colour. I wasn't that happy with it and I just put it aside and I left it, I went to bed and I got up the next morning and over time it had turned this beautiful, um, it's almost like a sage, sage green. So that is really gorgeous and of course it also goes really nicely with the matter. Um, they say with natural dyes is there's no clashes in nature and all of these colors do go beautifully together. But that was my, my lovely green. And then I sort of started on my hunt for the, the perfect green. So this next day I did some more with Fustique and this is Fustic at 2%. So this is what the instructions said to do. This is what I did the first day. Um, they're both nice colours. This one isn't quite as saturated. This one is more so. And this had more dye, this had less. That's what's going to happen. So that is my first stick at 2%. And then I thought I would do the first stick at 2% with the iron, so I weighed it out. And I've got this colour. Now this is the 2% first stick. This was that, um, oh, not this. This was the one that I didn't think would turn green and did. Now, this one, I didn't leave in the pot overnight. I just left it in there a couple of hours. And it hasn't turned as green. It's more of a, a yellowy green. So, I think, despite the instructions not saying so, leaving it overnight will actually make a greener green than just simmering it for a couple of hours. So I hadn't found my perfect green yet but I had some a fustic one about like this and I thought I would try a new dye. Can you guess what the new dye was? Was it indigo? Well I have indigo, I haven't used it yet. Was it woad? I haven't actually brought woad yet, I really want it. Um, me and my friends at a recent event were talking about how much we wanted to dye with woad and my friends say straight out to me, are you going to do it with we? And she was really excited at the thought of doing it with we and I was like, well actually, I did want to do it with we, I just was a bit shy to say so and we're there and we're talking about how we should collect this we and one of the organisers of the event walks up to us and we're having this big discussion about we and she was about to go have her lunch and I hope we didn't fall off her lunch but I had to explain to her, oh look, we're, we're talking about dyeing um, there's a method, method that uses a urine to, um, to do this dye and we are not doing it at a public event we're talking about doing it at our own reenactment den that we call it, we can say let's go to the den 
because we know it is quite smelly. But this is gardenia. And I'm not sure if they use this, if they had access to it. I don't know much about historical plants, but it was there to buy and I brought it. And gardenia makes blue. No fancy we anything like that. Alan Mordent put this in the pot and you use it. So this is at 3%. And this one was the second dye bath at 3%. And I got this beautiful blue. Now, something we all know is yellow and blue make green. So in my search for the perfect, um, you know, the perfect green, I put some fustic in a pot and I dyed a skein yellow. And then I took that skein and I put it into a pot of gardenia and I did get this beautiful green. So really happy with this green. I think it is very nice. And once again, look how beautiful all my colors go together. Aren't they lovely? So yeah, I just love, love these colors. Now the next skeins I will show you aren't as pretty as these ones. Um, it's because I haven't re-skeined them yet. What I do is I make my skeins, I dye them, I hang them out once they're dry, I bring them in, put them on my swift, and re-skein them, and twist them up so they're all nice and neat for presentation. These ones I just haven't twisted up. But in my continuation for the search for the perfect green, I dyed some more with Fustique. So I dyed two of these beautiful yellow for stick and one of them I over dyed with the gardenia remembering yellow and blue make green um, got a nice nice color not as pretty as some of my other greens they you know natural dyes they can come out different the next yellow I used is this screaming saffron and I dyed two and I don't know if they use saffron for dyeing, but I do know they had access to saffron because it's in recipes and they ate it. And this is really bright. It's almost like an orange yellow. It is so bright. And I took my saffron, I took my gardenia, and this is the green I got. It is a really bright green. If I compare it to my other green, you can see it is, it's like someone's turned the saturation up on a photograph. It has a real bright yellow coming through, which is from the bright yellow that is coming through. So beautiful greens, really happy with some of the colors I got. This little friend here, this is just um, from a mostly exhausted dye bath of Fustic. There was a bit of colour, chucked it in, came out a bit of a mushroomy, pinky, yellow, quite pretty. So I still really like green, I still would like to dye more greens, complete my search for the perfect green, but as much as we know yellow and blue make green, we also know that red and blue make purple. And I haven't, well I hadn't yet made purple. I tried putting iron in my cochineal and it hadn't really come out purple. So when I was dyeing the green, of course I think, oh, I can make purple. So I dyed a strong cochineal and then I put it in a strong gardenia. And I'm not holding a bright purple skein here because I did not get a bright purple. I got this. This is beautiful. It is a really deep burgundy red colour. Um, almost the same as the leather on the couch behind me, so I hope you can see. But it's not purple. It's very beautiful, but it's not quite what I expected. And, of course, I had the exhaust dye baths now. So, I had, I had a very pale pink, and I made sure to keep it very pale. I had a pale gardenia. And I'm not holding a beautiful pale purple here because once again, I did not get a beautiful pale purple. I got this color. 
and this is really really pretty I really like this color it is quite a bluish tone pink um, but it is not purple so not what I expected what I would like to try is what they do so a little bit of pink and a lot of blue and see what color that gets I wonder if it will get me more of a purple um, it might not um, the natural dyes it's not quite like mixing paint um, it's a bit different so maybe for my search for purple I will need to go back down the route of cochineal I have ordered some different cochineal um, and I've actually got the little bugs and we will see what color they give me um, I can also look at some other dyes that make purple on their own um, yet to dye I have lots of flowers that will give me yellows um, I would like to try them I would like to continue my search for the perfect green um, dye more green I would love to do more dyeing with matter I will need to buy some more matter um, because you're using a lot of matter to your fiber um, you need to buy quite a bit of matter definitely want to try woad and yes we will be doing it with we that will be a, um, a thing to do at the den we will do it outside um, and I would also like to try indigo which isn't really a medieval dye um, it was introduced post midi you know post middle ages it was around and there were rules about it I know in some countries the importation of it was banned because they were afraid that the indigo would put the local woad growers out of business the pigment from indigo I understand is either the same or similar chemically to that in woad it is just stronger so you need less of it um, I'm really looking forward to doing some work with indigo it's quite a bit of a different dye to what I've been using so for those who want to see more of my beautiful dyeing keep an eye out I will be posting pictures um, you know as I dye new colors and you will also see them at this year's Abbey Medieval Festival I'm really excited one of the other things I have been busy working towards is my own little textile workshop last year I made an attempt at a start of one it was thwarted for a few reasons I had a small shelter the way it was positioned if I wasn't there I couldn't see it so I wasn't comfortable leaving my things out there um, and I couldn't be there all the time so I had to pack everything up every time I left it which was a it was really annoying so I had to factor in set up and pack down time every time I used it the other thing was I was really sick last year I um, got a really bad cold a few days before the event and I still was not feeling well by the time the weekend came around this year um, my lovely husband has bought me a bigger tent and it is one that can actually be closed off so it has proper walls so if I need to leave it I can put the walls up and that way I feel more comfortable about um, having things in it because it will be a closed tent I also have some friends who will be helping me with it so if I can't be there all the time someone will be there and I will hopefully not be sick this year I'm just getting over a cold now so hopefully that is my cold for the winter season fingers crossed don't get sick um, and the other thing is I will have a lot more textiles I will have my spindle and distaff spinning I will have a bigger setup for fiber prep so you will see various types of wool and wool cards and wool combs yeah my big really scary combs my big ones like this and my little ones um, I will have you know some some flax there fingers crossed my spinning wheel will be finished in time my friend he is building me a spinning wheel because he is awesome um, so I really hope that will be finished in time I probably won't have a loom there this year but probably next year I will have a loom and I will have my beautiful display of all the different colors I have dyed so I will just have these on display 
Um, and I will also hopefully be doing some dyeing there. I have various buckets and tubs and I'm working on um, a setup which is a, a dyer's vat for heating the water and doing the dyes that need hot dyeing. So really, really excited. My friends are going to bring some of their own textiles as well. And hopefully it will be a really great place. And some of my friends from other groups have said they're interested in dropping by and just saying hi. So maybe some other friends will come and sit with us for half an hour or so. But I aim for it to be a really fun time. And I really hope I'm not sick this year. But if I am, it will still be able to go ahead because I have people helping me. So that is really exciting. Um... There are some other displays that we will be involved with as well. My husband is working on his own crafting displays. So we will have like a little alleyway of, you know, artisans. So there'll be the textile display. Um, there will be a woodworking display. Maybe if my friend hasn't finished my spinning wheel, I will make him build the spinning wheel at the event. He can be there working on it. Um... He hopes to build a wood lathe and have a wood lathe there. I don't know if that will be done, but he definitely already has some woodworking tools to take. We may have casting, all sorts of things um, happening. So I think this was meant to be a quick catch up and it has ended up a lot longer than I thought it would. So I will finish it here. But if you have any questions, um, do ask if you have any tips about dyeing um, let me know if you have any tips about the search for the perfect green or the search for the perfect purple um, let me know that as well um, and I will say goodbye and once again thank you for watching